So as you guys heard today, the Supreme Court basically ruled against affirmative action. Colleges, universities can no longer submit students based solely on their skin color. So what are your thoughts? Who wants to go first? Um, I mean, it's bullshit. It's, or sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. You could curse. Say that, but this is yeah, a free speech it's, channel. It's, it's bullshit. Like, the, you know, it's just, um, like, I mean, the Supreme Court is one, like, I mean, it's not even elected. So these people who we don't vote for are just, like, deciding, like, okay, yeah, affirmative action, that's done. Like, we're not doing that anymore. But then also, like, they, I read an article that said that they're keeping it for, like, the, um, like, military schools. So it's, like, we so we can't like have affirmative action for um like private universities yeah private universities but for like the military it's like still fine so it's like what like is it good or not like i don't know what are you what's your opinion yeah i think you know it's something that's overwhelmingly popular amongst young people affirmative action right it's genuinely really well you know supported and it just shows you how undemocratic the system is that a group of nine elect unelected people can just overrule something like that and we saw it again with the overturning of roe v wade and so many other crackdowns where they they're looking at loving versus virginia they're looking at all of these other pieces of legislation that is so overwhelmingly popular and i mean i don't think you know affirmative action fixes every problem that we have here there's clearly systemic roots and problems and we need a deeper fix but the fact that it's so popular and yet it's being overruled is truly disgusting now what ethnic group do you guys fall into i don't want to make any assumptions here i mean i'm white you're white white so i'm mexican i'm actually an immigrant so i would be the only one of the three of us that would be a beneficiary of classic affirmative action right lower test scores for me because of my skin color to get into the same places that you guys would have to have higher test scores. I'm against affirmative action, actually. Okay. I think that America is a meritocracy. I think it should be the best man or woman for the job, the end. I don't think that we should be you know, artificially elevating people that don't belong or deserve to be next to peers who all score A plus in their school just because they're dark. I don't think historical trauma from 200 years ago should have any impact on 2023. That's just my opinion. I'm very happy with the ruling. So obviously we're on opposite sides here and I wanna see affirmative action die in this country. I want everyone to compete on an even level playing field because that's what Martin Luther King said, the context of the character, not the color of the skin. So I wanna live the dream of true equality and a colorblind life. So what do you guys think about my reaction to it? I think, um, you know, Martin Luther King started to ask questions about why people are poor, and then he was assassinated by our own government. Well, <laughs> so, is, so is Kennedy, apparently, was assassinated by our own government. So, you know, our government is not always perfect. Let's put it that way. And you called out the hypocrisy, too, which is a really good point. The government's allowed to do affirmative action, but the private institutions are not. That's really strange, isn't that? Uh, it is a little strange. It I almost puts say, them in like a throne or a pedestal, like they're different than us, than we the people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I was going to say with your last point, though, with how you're like opposed to affirmative action because on the grounds that America is a meritocracy. Should be. Um, yeah. Or should be, yeah. Like, ideally, yeah, like that would be like a good thing if like everyone we had, like, um, like just based on like, okay, you score like a certain amount, you get in. But I mean, like, when you look at like the history of the United States, like you see like that, like the United States society and government has like discriminated against groups of people like for centuries, like sla- we had slavery in this country for like centuries and centuries up until the civil war when we like abolished it. And then we had apartheid up until, you know, the sixties, which a lot of people are still alive who like lived through that. And like, I think that you know like these programs like obviously like we like um Hayden said earlier is not like perfect but like we have to have some way to like address these like historical like injustices Mm -hmm. like if I you know if I like if we're like having if we're like running like in a race or something and I like push you on the ground or something and then I get ahead and then you get up and eventually like like I'm like way ahead right but like it wouldn't be fair after you get up for me to say well now we're both standing up so we're like we're on the same footing because there was like something that happened previously that like prevented people from being on the same or like the monopoly example you're all playing the game and i come in late and it's like how am i supposed to catch up in the in the game you know you guys have already done five loops already inquiring property so i need so i get the argument as well but the last thing i'm going to say is this when you look at time spent on homework right by 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 ethnic group 
Which group you think spends the most time on homework in high school? Which ethnic group? Asian, black, Hispanic, or white? I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. The answer is Asians. Asian students spend the most time on homework, and they're also involved in the most extracurriculars. The group that spends the least time on homework is actually black Americans, and they also spend the least time on extracurriculars. So that's a really simple, simple uh, today element that we can improve. If we could have the black community spend a little more time on schoolwork at home, equal to Asian students, they'll get the same grades. I think that's a really interesting point you make because a lot of the reason why people are not able to focus on homework might be because of larger family sizes or dynamics where maybe like there there's economic pressures where like they have to actually work jobs and support yep, their family true. so while like that might be true and again i haven't seen those statistics but that might be true but that doesn't mean that it's a group of people that doesn't care about school i mean it, it it's clearly outside you know factors that are forcing people to spend less time on important elements and a, a lack of access to resources to where like tutors like that's not something that's available and then there's that's also fair. yeah i was actually a substitute teacher in you know in hillsborough county and i actually i saw class sizes that were huge and overflowing and and teachers that you know due to the conditions and the lack of adequate pay just like left and you know it's so tragic like i'd see curriculum science math be replaced with packets so i've mm. i've been there and i've seen that and it's heartbreaking and it, it's always like predominantly black schools that have the least amount of resources so it, yeah it just kind of i do i do i do hear that that perspective and, and the last point i'll bring up is you know black families today 65 percent of them are fatherless homes and you guys probably know the research that a father and a mother in the home are the best indicators of performance for a child in the future. So I think the solution, and Candace Owens talks about this, restoring fatherhood into the impoverished communities, I think could go a long way in improving a lot of these conditions. That's just my opinion. You know, obviously we're coming from two different sides. You guys are liberals, right? Are you considered liberals, progressives? I... <laughs> you got colorful hair. Come on, you're a liberal. <laughs> and you got a facial piercing. You're a liberal. I'm a socialist. Yeah. I'm so a yeah, that, that would fall today under like more of the the progressive, you know, bracket. And I, I actually am a former progressive, and I'm now a um, hardcore right winger. So we're on two different sides now. But I like that we're able to have a polite conversation, which is what this country needs more of. You know what I'm saying? No one interrupted each other, and that was really nice to see. So thank you guys. I will see you tomorrow at the event. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you want to give uh, what's the event tomorrow? Tell my audience. Yeah, it's a Pride is a Protest um, tomorrow at 6.30, Curtis Hickson Park. And we're going to, you know, take to the streets. And Stonewall was a riot. Pride has always been one, and we shouldn't let it get co-opted into something that it's not. Uh